Good morning, Stone Village, and happy Sunday. I hope that all of you are well and safe in this world. All is well in my world. The Lord be with you, and let us pray. Prepare us, O God, to hear your word through the scripture of this day. Confront us with your claim upon our lives. Clarify the choices we must make if our lives are to have meaning and purpose. Help us to respond to the one who came as the bread of life, so we may know life at its fullest and at its very best. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The reading today is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. <laughs> Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know what you are thinking. Mary, virginity, Gabriel, immaculate conception, baby Jesus in June, June, pride month. Are you kidding? What's happening? No one here has planned for this. In fact, I didn't even plan for this. Yet earlier this week, while I was reviewing the liturgical calendar, I'm a real thrill seeker in my spare time, I was reminded May is the month of Mary, the Queen of Heaven, the Blessed Diva herself. And May 31st is a Marian feast day. And so I thought, hmm, can I preach on Mary outside of Advent? I do love her. I really do love Mary. Yet will I be so bold, so courageous as to change my plans? I wonder, how do you feel about changing plans? Are you adaptable? Are you rigid? Are you indifferent? How do you navigate? How do you carry? How do you respond to changing plans? We all make plans every day of our life. We have a plan in place. We do. Every night when I go to bed, I already know for the most part, for the most part, what I will do the next day. My calendar synced across all Apple products <laughs> tells me where I will be, when, and what I will do for at least the next three to six to nine months. Additionally, I have an ongoing to-do list, three actually, one for Stone Village, one for my home, and one which is seasonal. Needless to say, I have very clear expectations for my future. My life is planned. Planned. What about you? Is your life similar to mine? What are your plans for the future? Not long ago, I was speaking with a colleague who was reflecting on the last few years of her life. 
and she indicated the years had been hard and painful. Realities she never imagined interrupted her life. And she said to me, I thought I knew what faith was. I realize now I had no idea. I now know I didn't have faith. I had a plan. I continue to be inspired by her honesty, her insight, and her wisdom. I also continue to cringe just a bit as I reflect on the moment and her insight, recognizing my own life in her words, which pierced my own false piety. Full transparency, most days I don't live by faith. I don't. I live by my plans. Perhaps you do, too. I get through most days without faith. I plan my life and I live my plan. Faith doesn't really enter into it until my plans get interrupted and the unimaginable, the impossible happens. We see this interruption happen to Mary in today's reading. Christian tradition teaches Mary had been set apart at an early age and spent the first 11 to 13 years of her life living in the temple. She didn't intend to marry nor have a child. She planned to remain in the temple. Nevertheless, she was betrothed to Joseph and in time, gave birth to Jesus when she was a teenager. Talk about life interrupted. <laughs> what she never expected or planned for happened. We hear this also in her question to the angel Gabriel, how can this be <laughs> since I am a virgin? She could have just as easily said to him, dude, that's impossible, impossible. I wonder when in your life have you asked Mary's question? I'm not re referring to the virgin part, but the how can this be part. Haven't there been times when what you never expected or imagined possible happened? Haven't there been times when you have said something like, I can't believe this is happening. This is impossible. This is unbelievable. How can this be? Now, the circumstances for asking how can this be may be dire, reflecting the last thing you ever wanted to happen in your life, or the circumstances may be unexpected, something you never thought about or considered for your life, or the circumstances may be exciting, something you had hoped and dreamed for all of your life. Regardless of the circumstances, the unimaginable and unexpected showed up and interrupted your plans. And in those moments, one's faith is put to the test. And one must decide how to respond. Will we make a different plan or will we accept the moment? the interruption, and make an offering. You see, plans are about the future. An offering, however, is about the present moment. Plans are made with desires for and expectations of a particular outcome, which is why we plan. We plan to get what we want. An offering, however, is made without expectations and without the need to control or determine the outcome. Plans often set limitations. Offerings hold unknown potential and possibility. When Gabriel, messenger of the impossible, shows up, Mary doesn't try to understand or rationalize or cling to plausible logic regarding what is happening to her. That's just more planning, to be frank. 
Instead, she makes an offering. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Now, we are not going to be naive about the offering Mary makes. <laughs> I can imagine, even as she makes her offering, she's internally asking herself, what will happen to me now? Will anyone believe any of this? Will Joseph stay? What will the neighbors say? <laughs> Clearly, her offering is dangerously risky. It puts, puts her in a most vulnerable position. It doesn't guarantee an outcome. It doesn't necessarily fix anything or guarantee everything will be okay, which is true for any offering you or I make in our lives. An offering is simply a response, a step. Mary's offering in today's reading will be followed by another offering. When she goes to her cousin Elizabeth and her soul magnifies the Lord and her spirit rejoices in God, her savior. And then she'll offer another offering when she gives birth to Jesus and treasures and ponders all the shepherds tell her. And then she'll make another offering when she places her newborn son <clears throat> in the hands of Simeon. And then she'll make another offering when she stands at the foot of the cross, witnessing her child's death. Mary didn't plan. She offered. Offering after offering after offering after offering. It was the rhythm of her life and her faith. What if we were to live more like Mary? To be clear, I'm not suggesting you and I should completely give up <laughs> planning. In full transparency, I love a plan. I do. I really do. However, however, what if we held our plans a bit more lightly and loosely? What if we were a bit more adaptable and malleable to the interruptions to the divine, to the unexpected in our life? What if we met each person and the circumstances of our life asking ourselves one question, what's the offering I can make in this place and at this time? Perhaps this is really what faith is about, remaining present, to the shifting circumstances and interruptions of life, trusting, knowing God is present, in making an offering and letting go of the outcome. I wonder what might this look like and mean for you today? What's the offering you can make? How can God be known through you? If you but hold the space and offer yourself to God, to your neighbor, to self. Whatever your offering may be, like Mary, you too are also favored. And like Mary, perhaps, just perhaps, your offering may give birth to the divine in this time, and in this place too. Thanks be to God. Amen. I give thanks to God for each of you, and I pray this day you bear witness to the love of God. Bear witness to the love of God to those to whom love is a stranger. We'll find in you a generous and loving friend. In the name of Christ Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. I love you, stoners. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Bye.